Gentlemen, Miss Joan Rivers. I just want you to know that. And I'm, England to me is just the best, okay? There are only two things that um, I really hate about America when I look at England. One is we don't have any national monuments like you do. Our oldest national monument is Joan Collins. And I think, <laughs> which we'll talk, we talk about that one later. And the other thing is the year 1776 upsets me. One, because we broke with you in that year, and two, because it's Elizabeth Taylor's dress size. And, oh, oh, please. This woman is so fast that she put on a red dress, 30 school kids try to board her. So, she and Burton are known as Hamlet and Piglet. But, uh, so I just thought I'd come out here and we could talk a little bit and you could ask me some things and I could answer some questions and see what happens. Remember, we helped you during the war. So, uh, so don't ask anything vicious. Would anybody like to know anything? Yeah, did you have a good flight over? Did I have a good flight over? I had a lousy flight over, as a matter of fact, which I'm sorry, yeah, well, I know. Uh, what can I tell you? Uh, they lost all my luggage. What is it? It was BOAC, it's now Brit Air, right? Oh, oh, please! They lost all my luggage. I'm staying there in Heathrow Airport and the, the pilot walks through wearing my dress. I, I just... <laughs> Everything I'm wearing in front of you has been lent to me or found. This dress, which I like. Isn't this a pretty dress? I fa thank you, thank you. I, I found this dress on the chair next to my husband's bed. Isn't that lucky? And it came with its own garter belt and stockings and shoes and a little diaphragm. And it, it just, so, but, the stu but what I found interesting about um, flying over here is because I hate Americans. American students are very bitchy. I don't know if you're aware of this. And I found out that English stewardesses topped them. They are so... Oh, oh please! To a stewardess, stewardess, my window's open. Not my oil. And they couldn't care less. They, they look at you and they go like, you're, you know, where's my seat? Three inches below where it was last year. They are just vicious. Because uh, to the men, stewardesses are all over them. Stewardesses, they have no underwear. That's why... They, stewardesses marry very rich. I don't know if you're aware of this. Stewardesses marry richer in the States than any other class of, of woman working today. It's because they don't wear underwear and they're always getting men blankets. You know, it's a whole like, you know, let me get you another blanket. Mm -hmm. That's, sit by the window, you see the earth. Sit by the eye, you see the moon. And it's just... vicious. <laughs> I mean, the only thing I, sh I started to say, and it's because I'm nervous because I'm talking to you in your English, and I feel like you're saying, look at the accent. <laughs> but anyway, but uh, <laughs> the only uh, women that are meaner, I think, than stewardesses are nurses who are just the pits. Or uh, oh, pl oh, to, to women, to a woman, nurses to women. When I was in labor, the nurse apple pied my bed. I could, I could do. Oh. <laughs> Child, as a joke, the nurse brought out a puppy wrapped in a blanket, brought it in, looks like you. And it's just, like, oh, you're pregnant! Ah, or fat. Isn't that great? What month are you? What month are you? Eight and a half. Eight and a half. Oh, your first? Yes. Oh, so what are you going to have? A child? No, I know a child. I get a surprise, surprise. You have a puppy. No, uh, I mean, boy, uh, boy or girl, do you know? know. You don't know? You can have natural childbirth? I want to, I hope oh, to. Oh, God, why? <laughs> I, I, I had a Jewish delivery, which is they knock you out with the first pain, they wake you up when the hairdresser shows. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Have you been doing the exercises and the breathing and all that stupidity? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Don't be ashamed to ask for help when it's, you know, oh, when I was in late, when I was having my child, I screamed, when I was having my child, and that was just during conception. Are you excited? Oh, yes. yes. Are you going to take pictures? You can take pictures. Are you going to go in the delivery room? Oh, barf, barf. Oh, please. My friend, do you know Paula Prentice? She's an actress, right? And she's married to Richard Benjamin, who's an actor. They took home movies of their child being born, which is their business. But then they invite their friends over to see. Oh, Kid, have an hors d'oeuvre. I said, I don't know. <laughs> Run that film back 
happy, let's see that kid disappear. <laughs> Are you gonna nurse? I'm gonna nurse. Are you gonna nurse? <laughs> oh, God, why? <laughs> You're not from Beverly Hills, then, are you? Yeah. <laughs> Beverly Hills, the women don't nurse because kids are allergic to plastic. And then... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know why? Because I'm, like, I'm supposed to ask you a question, but I'm just telling you that I'll stop. Um, the reason it's lovely is because my daughter, I have a daughter, Melissa, who is 15 years old today, and I was feeling very blue because I'm here and she's in the States, and you should have. You should be as lucky with your child as I, as I have been with mine. I have such a nice little girl, knock on wood, thank God. And 15 years ago tonight, I was in New York City in Lenox Hill Hospital going, get this out of me! <laughs> and 15 years ago, nine months tonight, I was saying the same thing. <laughs> what a great joke. <laughs> Marie Osmond told me that joke. <laughs> Goodies. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of people say to me, oh, you, you say what you think. But it I mean, I hate like giddy giddy. Marie Osmond, she makes Mother Teresa look like a slut. I mean, just like, so <laughs> she's so good. Her knees have been together longer than the shadows. I mean, the <laughs> Anybody else want to ask you think of me or the nursing mother? So that's, yes. Do you buy your own clothes? Do I buy my own clothes? Um, why? This, uh, this, uh, oh my, no, uh, actually, uh, I found this dress in the closet right next to Truman Capote, but that's, uh, uh, oh, grow up, please. Uh, but, um, uh, I buy all my own because I'm married 17 years, you know, so you don't wait for your husband to give you anything. If I waited for my husband, when you're married, how long are you married? Eight years. Five years. Who said eight years? <laughs> Somebody just called, oh, the man that asked the question? Yeah. Are you married? Yes. Oh, but see, do you still buy your wife, like, cutesy wootsy things? No. No, it's all, exactly, you know what I'm telling you, it's all over, right? So, uh, if I want a fur, I wanted a fur coat, because I used to say I don't want, you know, fur coat, fur coat, because I don't want anything, you know, they have to kill. And then I figured, screw it, you know, let me find a lot of minks that had heart attacks. And I, oh, sure, they're going to die anyhow, so I'll put you on now. So, anyway, so he bought me, in 17 years of marriage, he bought me a hamster coat. You know how depressing that is? <laughs> Every time you put it on, you want to run around inside a wheel. I mean, that, and a friend of mine waited 21 years, and her husband bought her what he said was a fox coat. But I'm telling you, it was squirrel, because I never saw a fox with a nut in its paws. I, 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 <laughs> so I buy all my own clothes. You should buy your wife a gift, don't you think? Yeah, eight and a half years, you get a good ring at least. <laughs> How'd you do? Can I come up and see your ring? How did you do with your ring? <laughs> Let me see what, let me see your ring. Let me see your ring. I love you so much, Marilyn. Let me see your ring. <laughs> if you were straight, it would be all over the place. <laughs> Where's your diamond? Where's your diamond? Oh, there it is. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> Poor bitch. That's it. <laughs> Did you have to get married? Why did you take this shitty ring? Is that what? <laughs> no, no, don't be ashamed. Yes, you should. You're a very good looking girl. Stand up. Stan, you're a very pretty girl. Shouldn't you get a bigger ring than this little piece of crap right here? Absolutely. What, what do you do for a living? Um, designers. You're, desi you're designers and you accepted that? <laughs> Helen Keller would have felt it and said no. <laughs> get a big ring, I'm telling you. You're not Jewish, are you? You're Jewish? <laughs> the States. I don't understand. I wouldn't give that ring to an Arab. I, I'm shocked. I'm shocked. We'll talk later. You must really be lousy in bed. I mean, I have a ring like that. Anybody else want to know anything? Yes. Oh, hello. hello. Yes. Hello. 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 Joan, when I came over, went over to Los Angeles and then to San Francisco, I felt terribly lost there. You know, not, not the sort of feeling of the place. Now, how do you feel about being in London? What's the feeling for you? Fabulous. You want to know the truth? You're waiting for a joke. Fabulous. I am so happy to be here. It's just the best city in the whole world. I know I shouldn't say that, but because I have to go back to New York and go, yeah, well. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, oh, New York is a very tough city. Oh, please, the, the washer dryer has a rape cycle. It's a, it's a, you know. <laughs> That's why women, 
women have firm bodies and boobs and carrying your pocketbook night and day, it won't get stolen. But um, my favorite city next to London, though, is San Francisco, because it's gay, and I love gay people. Say, oh, have you ever been to San Francisco? The Marlboro Man rides side saddle. The whole city, they just... <laughs> Kids in school, A C D C E F G. Oh, just... They bury the men the way they lived in life, face down. It is the gayest. <laughs> Trouble. <Trump, baby. laughs> but that's my second favorite city, San Francisco. I love it. That's... Anybody else? Yes. Yes. Hello. Um, do you tell Melissa the facts of life? My daughter. Well, she, I t I had to tell. See, my mother, which is interesting. Again, I don't know sometimes if it's universal or different countries or different cities actively. My mother never told me the facts of life, which I think really messed me up. How many women, just can we see a show of hands, how many women's parents told them the facts of life? Is that interesting? How many women were not told? Is it, now, isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? Isn't that, my mother never told me a anything. First of all, she looked at me, she figured she'll never need to know. But, <laughs> Her, her dog food and let her have a drink. But, uh, but uh, my mother never told me a damn thing. I asked my mother, where am I from? She gave me a fake address in Cleveland. I, 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 all she told me was man gets on top, woman gets on the bottom. I bought bunk beds. I knew, I, when I got my period, I tied a tourniquet around my waist. I knew nothing, nothing. My wedding night, he said to me, I'm gonna blow in your ear. I said, use a Kleenex. I, 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 Sexually, so she, she, she. <laughs> What did she say, that stupid bitch? Uh, she said, the reason I'm so sick sexually, my wedding night was a disaster. He had to give me a demonstration. Do you know what I'm telling you? A demonstration. To this day, I cannot look at a donut and a clear in the face. <laughs> Nancy Reagan go, what? <laughs> Is that a mean bitch? I, oh, oh, Nancy, oh. Listen, nobody's any good, okay? We have nobody to choose from politically, all right? Who are we gonna vote? Reagan is so deaf. You can't use Reagan. They said to him, who do you want for Secretary of the Interior? He went, what? And we had that ass for two years. <laughs> and then, Jesse Jackson is a great singer-dancer, but that's not enough to be a president. <laughs> John Glenn, they sent an astronaut up, a monkey came down. There was no, but Nancy, Nancy, but I shouldn't do jokes. Because like, um, like your royal family, like, they, 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 no, they're elegant, 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 and they keep them that way. Nancy Reagan, of all our first ladies, I think has been the most elegant of any. She, you look at Nancy Reagan, and I'm not kidding you, you, you just know she's a lady. You know, I'm, I'm mean, not mean, and she's, you know, a little bitchy. We'll talk about that later. Oh, please. She told Helen Keller, you shut up, I'm still talking. But the point is, <laughs> Told Helen Keller. But, but the point is, <laughs> the point, Nancy Reagan is a lady. You look at Nancy Reagan and you know when she washes out her pantyhose, she washes out the whole pantyhose, not just the feet and the crotch like the rest of the. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> no woman ever washed out her whole tights. You just wash it the smellies a little here. <laughs> Don't you hate tights? Every, no matter what size I buy, the crotch is right down. <laughs> You want to get it to be to jump on a horse. And it's a friend of mine had a baby, did not know, dropped it into the tights, did not know for four days. Four days. She was walking around going, I hear crying, I hear crying. You seem to uh, enjoy embarrassing people, but what embarrasses you? Everything. Standing here in front of all of you, I'm just going... Uh, uh, I'll tell you, terrible things embarrassing. Um, when you're in a lady's room and you walk out and you've got a piece of toilet paper on your heel and you don't know, <laughs> you think you look so damn hot and you're walking around the <laughs> That, that or when, a, when, a when a dog makes out on your leg. <gasps> Do you just die? You're standing at a friend's house, you go, oh, that's all right. Oh, that's all right. Compliment. That, 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 embarrassing. Oh, oh well, what about when you're in a supermarket, you just bought a year's supplies worth of Kotex, right? Do you have that here? 
Yeah, a year's supplies worth of codex, and you're walking through the supermarket, and there's a guy you went to school with. I always go, I'm making a quilt. I, 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 that's, that, when you're in the bathroom and you flush the John, and it gets all choked up, and you say, Well, I'll flush it again, and things will go down, and it starts to rise up. <laughs> dinner table with a big wet mark on your chest. <laughs> the the, the, the most embarrassing ever happened to me, the mo in the States, uh, not that I'm getting older, but uh, they have, like, brown marks start to come out on women's hands, right? And they have a product over there called Porcelana. Do you have anything like that over here? Where it takes the brown spots off your hands, right? So I figured, well, I don't want to see these stupid old brown marks, right? Because they really look like liver spots. My dog is trying to eat my knuckles. Here. Like, oh. so I went out and I bought some porcelana cream to put on my hands. I went like that and my nipple disappeared. I went, oh, my <laughs> so embarrassed. But everything embarrasses me. That's, uh, anybody else? Oh, yes, hello. You work at the most incredible speed. Have you ever taken any drugs of any sort? If I took drugs, could you imagine? There's, uh, California, though, is all... California, where we live, uh, is so druggy now. I mean, like, John DeLorean. He once sneezed in my face. I felt good for nine days. I mean, major drugs. <laughs> the man's favorite movie was Tootsie. I mean, it was just... <laughs> over here, too, I flew back with, um, on the plane with Linda and Paul McCartney. <laughs> the only difference was they were outside of the plane. So I just... Uh, and he knew how much his luggage weighed down to the ounce. I'm telling you. <laughs> California, everything is... California, if it's whiteness on the table, they sniff it. I have a friend who OG in the beauty shop on dandruff. I mean, just went like... <laughs> the Jewish lady went... Because <laughs> Jewish people make me laugh. We're Jewish, and I bought my husband a home computer, but instead of an apple, I bought him a prune. Because the Jewish computer... <laughs> And so you punch up like in a real computer and it says three times three is nine. On the Jewish computer it says three times three is nine for you, 750. <laughs> <laughs> Silly computer. Yes, hello. What actor or entertainer do you admire most in this country? In this country, I don't know, again, because I, I haven't been here to see that many entertainers, but so I have to know them from the American television. Well, first of all, Monty Python, without a stop. But oh, I mean, I, I was the first one to see the Monty Python movie, literally, in the States when it came over, the newest one. Just, uh, that was it. I was online in, look at all places, Kansas City. Well, I was also the only one online in Kansas City. Right? <laughs> oh, don't go. Do, promise me, you will never go to Kansas City if you see America. The stupidest place in the whole world. I have a theory. I think intelligence has to do with salt water. Both coasts, brilliant. As you come inland, dumber, 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 dumber. The apex of stupidity, Kansas City. They have a dumb... <laughs> the worst place in the whole world. <laughs> and they didn't know what I was talking about. And I, I would do a joke and they would go, it was like talking to 2,000 RCA Victor dogs. I mean, like... <laughs> and I came on stage, and there was a woman, this is a true story, nursing a child in the front row. Do you know what it's like to walk on a stage? You look at us, we look at you, and you look. <sighs> there was a woman in the... You're not going to do that, are you? Oh. And I, who would you watch, me or the nursing mother? A woman in the front row in front of 2,000 people whipped out the old lunch bucket and is sitting there. I, who would you watch, me or the nursing mother? Kid was 14 years old. Who would you watch? So I had more trouble with Kansas City understanding me than I think I'm having over here, if that makes, you know. So it just depends. You're either on the same level or you're not. And unfortunately, a lot of people are not on my same level. <laughs> when you do a joke and they go, what? Because <laughs> in any other society, I would have been put away. And there's no question about it. So just keep walking, you know. <laughs> Anybody else want to know anything? It's Joan? Yes. Joan Malinsky. Joan Malinsky. Why didn't you change your name to uh, Joan Collins? You're obviously very jealous of her. <laughs> it's not that I'm jealous of that older woman. It's that I feel... No. <laughs> Joan is a dear, dear, dear friend of mine, and I've known many of her tricks. And... Um... <laughs> what I like is she's not ashamed of her bed sores, and she gets up, and she... <laughs> Joan Collins. She comes on the Johnny Carson show with me, and we really do a battle of bitchiness back and forth, and it's really like playing tennis, because she's so bright, and you go whap, and she hits it right back to you. I said to her, who was the best man you ever had in bed? And she said, your husband. And it was just... <laughs> 
She's divine for her age. She looks smashing. <laughs> Because in California, they all work out. Uh, Jane, who does, do you do the Jane Fonda exercise tape here? <gasps> Is, did you have that yet? Yeah. Is that Hitler in a curly wig? I cannot <laughs> <laughs> if You find yourself making obscene gestures to the television. I don't know. <laughs> if God wanted me to lift my leg, he would have put a string on the end of my toe. I don't have any exercise. <laughs> But I love, I really sincerely like Joan Collins. Anybody else? Yes. Which okay. is your favorite American TV show? My favorite American TV show? Do you think I'm crazy? The Carson Show. Do you think I'm going to say anything else? Uh, actually, you want to know what I watch? Uh, Masterpiece Theatre. Wait, I salivate. That's all your... Uh, we just watched uh, Elizabeth the first with Glenda Jackson, six, uh, and we taped it. I got into bed with Elizabeth at 10 o'clock on a Sunday morning with the papers and wine and cheese and watched her whole life till eight o'clock at night. So we wait for, uh, all upstairs, downstairs drove me crazy. I went nuts for that, you know. So I wait for what we call Masterpiece Theater, which are all your, your good shows, Broadway. I don't watch Dallas, I don't watch any of that stuff. Well, I'm working at night. You know what I'm saying? So God forbid I'm home to watch Dynasty. That means I can't pay for the dress. So I, <laughs> that's the way it goes. And I watch any old movie I can get my hands on. Yes. Do you treasure any show business experience? Do I treasure any show? Yes. I'll tell you what I treasure, okay? But it's a serious question. Everyone can go to sleep now. Um, uh, two, two things I treasure. One, I was working in Greenwich Village and I was starting out and people, and in those days I was doing mild little jokes, you know what I'm saying? Really little jokes. But they were very outrageous for the time, okay? And people were not as polite to me as they are now. They would get up, they would spit in your face, they would walk out. <laughs> you knew they didn't like it. Yeah, well, screw you, same to you. And they'd walk out. So, and I was really balmy and Lenny Bruce came to see me one night and came backstage and said to me, you're right and they're wrong. And I lived on that for four years. I just, every time I would bomb, I'd say, well, Lenny Bruce thinks I'm okay. That was one, and the second thing was Johnny Carson, who gave me my first break on American television. Um, I was seven years again in these terrible clubs and nobody would take a chance with me. They would bring me up and they would say, you're too wild, you're too outrageous, you're too this, you're too that. Nobody would take a chance. And finally they put me on as a pity booking and they put me on the last, literally, 10 minutes of the show because my friend was Bill Cosby who had just hit very big and he said, give her a break, give her a chance. And they put me on for 10 minutes at the end of the Carson show expecting total disaster. And at the end of it, Johnny Carson said to me on the air, you're going to be a star. And that changed my life. And I had put a bad check into the mail that day. You know what I mean? <laughs> and the next day I went to the bank to, to cover it with the Carson money. And they were nice to me at the bank. And I thought, ooh, something's changed. Something's happened. They had seen me the night before. And those are the two big experiences. One was Lenny Bruce, one was Johnny Carson. Because I'm telling you, I really had a rough time. I'm delighted. I, I'm 17 years now in the business doing well, okay? I still get into a limousine. I still go... Am I lucky? Am I a lucky bitch? Because those seven years were so rough, I take nothing for granted. I go, oh, God, I'm staying at Claridge's. <laughs> you know, they should do it so good. So. Anybody else? Yes, yes, hello. Hello up there. Hello there. Who is your favorite <clears throat> film star, and do you oh. fantasize about him? Do you, uh, my favorite film star is Robert Redford, and my fantasy will, is that we'll be in bed together and he'll tell me he's gay. <laughs> <laughs> Joan, I have news for you. What is it, Bob? I'm gay. Oh shit. <laughs> the gentleman behind you, yes. Do you think America will ever have a woman president? I think America right now politically is in a lot of trouble. We have nobody really terrific. There have only been two people I'd like to have felt sorry for in all of politics. I mean, when you look back what we've had, whether they're men, every, first of all, every president's wife has been a drunk, so God forbid we don't want, you know, oh, <laughs> stop and think politically. Mamie Eisenhower was a drunk, do you remember her? They said it was ear trouble, she couldn't hear them say you've had enough. <laughs> Betty Ford, they kept her in the Oval Office. She wouldn't bump into things for those guys. Uh, Lady Bird Johnson, who began to drink when she realized those two daughters came out of her. Remember the Johnson girls? Linda <laughs> Bird. <laughs> Pat Nixon, who began to drink when she realized she had to sleep with him. Yeah, I mean, oh, 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 could you sleep with Nixon without a big drink in you? Think about that one. I'm ready for fun. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, Mrs. Thatcher's doing a great job. I would like to see a woman in the, in the White House. The only one that doesn't drink is Nancy, because she's very classy, you know. And we don't, don't think she drinks. <laughs> if she does drink, it would be something like wonderful, like, 
Cristal champagne, you know. And that wouldn't be like stupid ripple. That's, uh, and Mrs. Uh, what's her name? The other lady who you couldn't blame. Oh, um, the one that had the ugly daughter. Who's just our president? Um, Amy, the Carters. Oh, that little girl. Oh, it made you ashamed to be in America. She'd go on TV. <laughs> she one time lit the Christmas tree lights of the White House, little Amy Carter, and scratched her crotch on television. I got the shock. I was working in Denver. I said, God almighty, the president's daughter's got crabs. I was... <laughs> I was devastated. <laughs> Anybody else want to know anything? Yes, hello again. Now you're getting older. What do you miss going... Excuse me? <laughs> Pollution did this. <laughs> you're the only woman who ever taught me anything about gynecology. Will you miss going to the gynecologist now you're older? I think you have to go more often because it's the only chance you get. <laughs> I, 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 uh, no. <laughs> you know when you know you're in trouble when your gynecologist gets nauseous. I mean, it's just, <laughs> Which is true. I have a gynecologist who does jokes. Do you know what it's like to be in the stirrups and have your doctor walk in wearing a snorkel? I mean, it's just... <laughs> carrying a pool suite. My guy is like jokes. Dr. Schwartz at your cervix. My guy is like... I'm dilated to meet you. Say ah. Oh. <laughs> there are my car keys. I unless you learn to throw your voice. Hi, Doc! I, I, I just dropped in. How's that nice wife of yours? So, I should, I should leave you now, I think. What, what a pleasure talking to all of you. I, 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 I thank you so much for being here, man. Just say, a you should have a lovely baby. Uh, you should get a bigger ring. You three are terrific. Thank you all so much. I think, I, I think we've all learned something very wise here tonight. What have we learned, you stupid bitch? Thank you for asking. I, what is that you're playing, Yummy? What is that you're playing? Battle of the Republic, that's perfect, that's beautiful. Did you write that? No, oh, <laughs> Could you keep playing that? That would be very nice. Because I think we've all learned something very wise here tonight. Yeah, what have we learned? Thank you for asking. I think you've now learned... What a, <laughs> you may shovel along during this part. I think you've now learned what a good person I am. I think you've learned what makes me happy is to have made you happy. Could you build that a little, please? I'm really getting that. <laughs> if I could come on a stage and make one person laugh, one child, could you build that, please? I'm getting that. Would you please play it now? <laughs> if I can make one person laugh, keep playing. If I can make a child laugh, a mother smile, a shut and sit up. If I can do this, bigger, bigger. If I can do this, yes. Bigger, bigger, God damn it. Bigger, bigger, bigger. Bigger, bigger. <laughs> if I can do this, and if I can pick up 25,000 pounds for doing this. Pleasure to be here.